Welcome back to the channel, good friends. Brian from Apex Detail. Today we're working on an 8.4 liter V10 Dodge Viper. This power plant produces 649 horsepower. That is 600 foot-pounds of torque at 6,400 RPM. Yes, this definitely gets my respect. Our job today will be refreshing this gorgeous metallic paint job. With the swirl finder, we'll walk around and I can show you some examples of light topical damage or imperfections that we will be removing. It's best to approach this correction uh, carefully and responsibly, as it's, uh, in, unless you have an expensive Develsco uh, depth reader, paint depth gauge, uh, you will not get a reading because the whole car is fiberglass. So with the two pieces of information that we already have, that the car has been already corrected, polished, and it's going to be difficult to keep track of what's removed unless you have an expensive paint depth gauge. You'll want to be careful and leave as much clear coat behind as possible. Here we get some gloss meter readings before we get started. And our goal is to be well into the triple digits once we're finished. I hope the mic picked that up. Um, we will be breaking out the work stuff clay mitt and also clay bar because there seems to be a little bit of overspray, especially areas that are facing upwards. And that can be easily removed. The clay is fine. You don't need a coarse, aggressive clay to attack that, and it won't take long either. Use a combination of the two or just the mitt or clay by itself. The next thing on our list is to protect rubber grommets, trim, any type of vinyl, anything we don't want the backing plate or the pad to bump up against or even get some polish splatter to discolor it. Uh, masking tape, quick and easy. You don't have to tape up the vehicle like we're painting the car. Just protect some of the areas that are vulnerable, just like this. Being familiar with these vehicles and their finish, I'm going to start out with uh, just throwing a combination out there. We're going to do some test spots on the hood and the trunk area. We're going to team up Papa Cut from Phoenix EOD with a Eurofiber pad. That's a pad that has 50% cut and 50% finish fibers. Not 100% sure what the camera will be picking up here, but I can share there are some outlines from etching, staining, and some light love marks or swirls in this little test area that we can go after.
The shop manager is determined to help me polish this with her tail. It's not quite helping as much as she thinks it is, but I appreciate the effort. We'll grab the panel prep to remove any oils or residue from the polishing fluids. And we'll come and take a look and see if that combination has, in fact, give us the results that we need. I know uh, just out of using the combination often that it's not overly aggressive and will not remove a ton of clear. We can adjust either way from there. We can get a bit more aggressive and we can definitely lighten up the load and get less aggressive very easily. Now this, this looks good. This looks very good. However, I'm not done with the test spots. Uh, even though this would give me the results I'm looking for, I will go uh, a step backwards when it comes to aggression. If I can find that a even a lesser aggressive combination works, well then I'll stick with that because then we're removing less clear. So we'll move back towards the rear uh, trunk area of the Viper here. Plenty of swirls and love marks to attack back here. I removed the Eurofiber 5050 pad and attached a Kalkemi 1 pad. This is a foam pad meant for one steps and is just a little bit less aggressive. Can finish down a little bit better as well. Fantastic results. So this is what we're going to stick with. Towards the uh, corner or the edge of the trunk near the ducktail, there's a little bit left over. All I have to do is switch over to a smaller pad, and then I can concentrate on the, the edge of the panel um, and just do it safely and responsibly. So let's continue on. This channel has never been or never will be about perfection and chasing egos. It's taking care of your own cars or your customers' cars and, and doing it in a safe manner that there's plenty of clear left over. Because believe me, guys, when these cars go back out into the real world environments, they're going to get scratched again. There is no way to avoid that unless you're going to park it in a museum. Well, then why not just chase after perfection? Because... That's the only way I would, or if the customer signs off on paperwork and gives me a release to chase after perfection and throw caution to the wind when it comes to leftover clear coat. Hope that makes sense, guys. And you to go around the whole vehicle with that combination. I found no surprises. There was no spot correction that was needed, meaning no wet sanding or a heavy cut compound for deeper defects. It turned out very well time to break out the panel prep and remove any of those oil uh, polish residues or 
um, anything left over from the correction process. And when you're using a panel prep, soak the area. Don't just mist it lightly. I know you want to be fiscally responsible and save the prep, but you want to use enough of it to be effective as well. So put a nice heavy layer on the panel, give it a little time to soak in and do its work and wipe off. BC2, that's going to be the foundation layer of protection for this job. That is our polysilazane spray coating. It's an entry level coating. For those that may be on the fence about a true professional coating, uh, this gives the customer or gives yourself a taste of what it would be like um, at a lower percentage if you had a true ceramic coating. Easy, very easy to use. Spray on, wipe off. You'll be around the car quickly. No streaking, no hazing, no high spots. It's a user-friendly experience. It was meant to be that way and very economical to purchase as well. All painted surfaces have that foundation layer of protection. You can layer this and you can also protect plastics and vinyl such as this panel right here. It will protect it, it will uh, slightly condition it as we'll see here, meaning it will give plastics, rubber, and vinyl a nice dark, deep, rich look. Then when it cures, it will also protect at the same time. Huge difference between the protected and unprotected areas. Use this on the external uh, surfaces of your vehicle. Anything from wheels, like we're doing here, you can see how it transforms the shine on these wheels, calipers, use it on headlights, taillights, plastic, trim, aluminum, chrome, all hard surfaces. Since we're in the area, let's top it off with a tire coating as well. Hydro Selects will be the choice here today. With our work done, time to let BC2 cure. BC2, minimum cure time, four hours before you can top it and send the car on its way or enjoy it if it's yours. Letting it sit overnight is even a better idea if you can. The next 14 days, it will continue to increase gloss and slickness. In this particular case, it's been six hours and it's time to send it home. Before we do, we're going to top it with BC3. This is our SIO2 detail slash maintenance spray. 
and is even effective and looks incredible as a standalone product. That's another spray and wipe product. Easy to use again, and you can get around the car quickly and have more time to enjoy it. Here's a first person view to show you just how easy this is to use. BC3 does have a little bit of SIO2, so we're going to let it cure, and before we send it out the door, let's quickly walk around, get a couple measurements of gloss. Now this is early, this is very early, and in some areas we're already reaching the triple digits. By the time this is fully cured, we're looking at about 103, 102 gloss units on the meter. We're close already. The sun can be a detailer's worst critic. It's time to face the music, back it out, and look at it, walk around, and see what it looks like under the sun's uh, nice, warm, beautiful rays today. And I think we did a good job. The customer will be smiling. And this Viper, this Super Snake here, is ready to be enjoyed. I love the color. So guys, we freshened up the paint on this Viper quickly and responsibly with hardly any measurable clear coat removed, and it looks fantastic. And that's pretty much the way you want to go about it if, uh, number one, you can't keep track of what you're removing, and number two, if it, it's been corrected before. This has been Brian from Apex Detail. I'll catch you in the next video.